uh, tutorial. So, like I said, whoever want to enter after this, I will uh, reject because uh, once I started to share uh, the screen, I'm not going to uh, entertain anymore. So, we go to, uh, as usual, before before we start, uh, do you have any question to ask? Uh, doctor, Again, I have please. one question. Mm -hmm. uh, for the CAM, CPM, and UPM audits, or does this apply to the Islamic finance? Sorry, say again. Uh, in for Islamic the... finance, mm -hmm. uh, do we all adopt this CAM, GPM to repay our mortgage? No. no. For, for Islamic finance, like you have... Um, like you have learned before, so basically we uh, we talk about al um, bayi and then um, tawaruk as as uh, musyarakah mutanakisa. So basically, these are the three uh, Islamic products that we are following. So basically, uh, CAM constant amortization mortgage is more or less, not 100%, more or less like Islamic finance, but CPM and GPMs are completely uh, two different things which uh, do not have uh, what we call it close relationship with the Islamic finance. The closest one is CAM, constant amortization mortgage. <clears throat> but you cannot say that CAM, although it's uh, the closest one, but there are also certain uh, differences so basically CAM is not equal to uh, either one of the products under the Islamic finance so like uh, you know so in order to answer your question no okay Islamic finance Islamic finance um, commercial is commercial the only thing is uh, the only thing is they work together uh, in Malaysia only because we have to do a system but in other countries that implement uh, completely the uh, Islamic finance, so basically it will be more um, competitive because they are competing between one Islamic bank with another. But in Malaysia, because we are conventional, like I said before, we don't want to kill conventional, and conventional also don't want to does want to kill uh, Islamic. That's why they have to work together, and then in the way that we calculate. Uh, like the example I've given uh, yesterday. So basically, we started with the constant payment mortgage. If we implement it in any uh, countries in the Middle East, for example, we do not calculate like what we did the calculation because they have the own determination because the, the, the basic thing is, um, you know, to, because they are, they are, they are uh, competing between themselves so basically there is no need uh, to compare like uh, the interest rate charge and the profit rate it shouldn't be the same so that's the difference okay any other question no if no then we we'll... uh, so is the CAM, CPM, GPM, these are the conventional product? Yes, they are all conventional products. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, one more question, last one, if you have. Otherwise, we proceed with the lecture. So, I assume no. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> I forgot to record, I think. Wait, huh? Okay. So, I've rejected a few students just now. I'm sorry about that because I've already given up to 2.20, now almost 2.30. They're still uh, trying to enter. So now we go to our lecture yesterday. 
So basically, we uh, stop. We stop at I think graduated payment mortgage, but I try to uh, recap again just in case you uh, did not follow. So basically, we started with one hundred thousand in the beginnings for the GPM graduated payment mortgage, and then because of the graduation, the, the graduation rate is seven point five percent, and the graduation period is five years, and then the first payment, which is very very low, uh, with four hundred uh, ringgit per month. So basically, we convert it to 12 months. So the first year, we have 4,800 ringgit uh, per month, uh, per year. So because the interest rate is still the same, 12%, so basically 12% over 100,000. So we have to pay interest 12,000. So 12,000 as compared to the annual payment, which is only 4,800. So that means we have uh, uh, more amount to pay, but at this time, we cannot afford, and then that balance, which is 7,200 ringgit, must be included uh, together with the outstanding uh, principal. So the outstanding principal, we started with 100,000, now plus another 7,200, it will become 107,200 in year two. So the same thing, uh, when come to year two, the <clears throat> graduation rate, which is 7.5%, to increase the annual payment, now it becomes 5160, and then the interest rate still 12%, so 12% over the uh, existing uh, capital outstanding, and therefore we have to pay interest to serve interest at 12,864. <clears throat> so because we are still paying less than 12,864, that means we have to borrow uh, from financial institution. So now, um, so for the third year, we must uh, include the borrowings that we have uh, just made. So the things will continue until year five because this is um, the graduation period is uh, five years. Sometimes the graduation period is at uh, three years. So when the graduation, the graduation period is five years, so basically this is the amounts, the outstanding principle in year five, which is 131. Nine five nine. Then in year six, after we uh, include nine four two four here, it will become one four one three eight four. So this one four one three eight four will go back to the constant payment mortgage. So that means we must have equal uh, value of uh, reinstatement uh, uh, of repayment. So basically, in year six, we have the outstanding principle of one four one three eight four. And then we have to calculate based on the constant payment mortgage, and based on that, we have eighteen thousand nine to eight per year throughout the mortgage period up to year twenty five. And then the the the, the system follows the one that uh, the same exactly like the constant payment mortgage. The only difference is uh, for the first few years, for the first five years. So sometimes if you have three years, that means for the first three years. So towards the end, we will see here the outstanding principle should equal to the loan amortization. And then in year 26, there is nothing, um, no more outstanding principle and no more loan amortization. And then in terms of the total annual payment, which include 306, 448 interest, so it will become higher than the uh, constant payment mortgage and constant amortization mortgage because for constant amortiza amortization mortgage only 256,000 but constant uh, payment mortgage even higher than the constant amortization mortgage which is 318749 but this is the most common um, method or, or products that uh, most Malaysians uh, purchasing uh, uh, when, when they, they try to create mortgage with financial institution. So this is the most, what we call it, the the, uh, the most demandable products because based on here, we normally pay, uh, according to our, uh, our, our present uh, eligibility, so we know that, uh, let's say our income is, uh, our, our 
eligibility out of our income is uh, 2,000 per month, for example. So 2,000 per month, that means we have to pay 2,000 per month throughout the mortgage period. So when our income increase, um, so maybe uh, in five years time, for example, our new eligibility will be at 4,000. That means almost double of our present income. So doesn't make uh, any different with the existing uh, payment, which is 2,000. So in fact, we can purchase another unit. But uh, like I said just now, if we think that we have more money in the beginning, we can either choose constant amortization mortgage or graduated payment mortgage. But the difference you can see that uh, the reason why I'm giving you uh, the same interest rate, the same uh, mortgage uh, term, the same uh, loan amount. So basically you can see the difference. So in terms of uh, interest, that what make the total value or the total loan uh, increase uh, once we completed the, uh, once we amortize the whole thing. So basically the interest we have to pay on the GPA is 306,000. And then the interest we have to pay for uh, CAM is 156,000. And then the interest we have to pay for CPM is 218,000. So basically by looking at the uh, figures in terms of monetary uh, value, so obviously um, the best product is a constant amortization mortgage. But we cannot say that this is the, back, the best product um, for, for uh, investors. There will be uh, pros and cons for each product because some products may look, uh, you know, a bit uh, different. For example, the GPM here, which will, uh, where we have to pay 306,000 uh, for interest. But if we do not have uh, enough money, but we expect to receive uh, higher money uh, because we are working in very good company or in a secure post. So basically we can do, we can choose this product um, in order to get a better, uh, better quality of uh, houses. But uh, there will be a lot of headache just in case when you come to year six, you do not reach your target. And then uh, there is a possibility of default. And at that time, so we'll be having a problem because we cannot pay. Although we have a big house, good quality as compared to our eligibility if we um, take the uh, CPM. So basically, when come to year six, we will be having problem. So it is good if you want to hold the unit just for uh, the number of years. For example, uh, we want to hold the unit up to year uh, six or seven only. So, and then after that, we want to sell. So the different thing, because at this time, it will involve the so-called balloon payment from year six onwards, which we, maybe we can pay, but uh, if you talk in terms of the M40 or B40, definitely they cannot effort uh, up to this stage. But we talk T20, then of course they uh, uh, can pay. So that's the difference. So now, any question on uh, CPM, uh, GPM, and CAM just now? Um, Doctor. Yeah. Uh, regarding the GPM, the first payment amount is determined by bank or there's a formula to calculate it? Uh, it will be determined by both parties. So oh, because okay. the bank will ask you how much can you effort, effort uh, at this time, and then you subject to whether the bank agree or not. So... And then the bank will also uh, project your income based on your um, all the evidence that you provided. If the bank is happy, then the bank can give you um, the lowest figures that they could at that time. So it depends on um, you know the arrangement. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Any other question, uh, Doctor? Hmm. If we couldn't pay the loan, will the bank terminate? the agreement for the first three months for the first three months the bank will uh, send a uh, reminder okay and then as long as let's say we we uh, overdue for three months and then the bank will send us a reminder to pay and then if we manage to pay only one month for example of the three months uh, overdue then the bank uh, won't do anything 
as long as you pay one month out of, out, out of the three months. But if you can pay three months straight away, then it will be better. Okay. Thank you, Radha. Okay. Any other question? No? Okay. Now we go to um, Islamic uh, finance. So basically, uh, we we retrieve again the um, the, the uh, CPM, the constant payment mortgage, for the purpose of um, uh, discussion to compare with the Islamic finance. But this one I uh, use another uh, figures. So let's say the property value is one hundred and seventy five thousand, and then we pay ten percent deposit or down payment. So the balance will actually be. Uh, through the housing loan from financial institution. And then the mortgage term is 15 years. I'm cutting it short for the purpose of discussion because normally it's a 25 up to 35 years. People seldom get 15 years. But the longer we put, that means the longer the, the, the flow that we should see. What um, we have to understand is the concept behind it. Although it is not um, acceptable under the present standard, if the present standard we should put 35 years, and the interest rate also we should put, especially during this uh, COVID, which is only three percent. So three percent is very low already. Even the government loan is four percent. So the commercial loan can give uh, below the government loan now. The government loan is four percent because that is the requirement uh, based on. <clears throat> Based on a previous time, they, they never change the 4% uh, for the government. So basically, no matter what happened to the market, is that the interest rate increased to uh, 18%, like it was in 1997 um, 98 But at that time, the government loan was still at 4%. So up to now, nothing uh, changed. So we have to understand the concept behind it, not the, the, the application. The application, we can apply, but you just change it to 35 years here and you reduce it to 3%. That is the application. And then the down payments, if you assume that this is the second unit that you are purchasing, you have to put 20% down payment here. The third unit, you have to put 30% down payment. So that is the principle behind it. So for the discussion, we just assume that this is the first time house buyer and then we have to pay 10% uh, down payment. We should come from our own Money or from EPF account number uh, two. So you know that whenever you work so next time, whenever you graduate, you uh, started to uh, work. So basically, there is a compulsory requirement for you to contribute to the EPF. So at the moment, uh, only a couple of days ago, the government had decided to. Uh, reduce the contribution from employee to 7% only. So the norm was uh, 9%. But the employer, they have still have to contribute 13%. Even during this uh, COVID period, they still have to contribute 13%. So all in all, you have to contribute or the money that you are saving is 13% plus uh, under normal market condition, 11%. So that means 13 plus 11, there will be 24% of your salary will actually be uh, safe in EPF. So the salary that have to be deducted from your gross salary is 11% only, but the employer will top up another 13% of the value of your salary. So basically towards the end, when you do not use the figures, so when you reach the age of uh, 60, for example, there will be millions of ringgit in EPF account. But if you take out for some reason to purchase a house or to get married, whatever, you know, like COVID-19 now, so everyone is allowed to get, uh, to withdraw uh, from one of the account, uh, I think up to 5,000 ringgit um, for uh, three months. I think if I'm not mistaken, I forgot already. But uh, we are allowed to get our money out so basically, if we withdraw, that means obviously our uh, future uh, saving will be become lesser and lesser from time to time. So it's up to us. If you can afford, then what? Uh, why do we need to uh, withdraw? 
So now we see you know, the same uh, example again. So we started with 157, 500 ringgit. So this is the uh, amount of loan that we should get from the uh, financial institution. And then we have to calculate the annual payment based on the constant payment mortgage. Like uh, I said just now, so because this is uh, in Malaysia, usually we use this as a base because we want to make it a win-win situation. You know, you approach the the, the uh, Islamic finance, so they will calculate based on their profit, but their profit is more or less like uh, the interest rate here, six percent. So they will check if the conventional system uh, use six percent for fifteen years, it will become sixteen to one six point six four. And the Islamic finance also will try to get or to offer the interest rate more or less like to become ceasing uh, two and six as well. So win-win situation. The only difference is this one is interest rate. That one is um, uh, profit rate. But the under normal practice it will be a little different, not much different, maybe about one or two percent different uh, as compared to a conventional. But when they come to calculation, when you approach the bank manager or the uh, a mortgage manager, so they will use this first. Even if you apply for uh, Islamic finance, they will use this first. Okay, they establish this 16216.64. So basically, this is the monthly amount that um, the conventional uh, use, and then they compare with the, the the Islamic system, and then they try to give the profit rate, compare, and then you will see more or less like the same figures. So 157500 in uh, year one, and then the interest rate charge is 9450, which is a 6%. So the difference between the amount that you paid as compared to the interest rate, it will become the loan redemption. This loan or this figure is the amount that is being, uh, is being amortized uh, using um, a conventional system. And then the process will continue like we have discussed before. Towards the end in year 15, you'll see that the figures here should be the same 1529871 for the outstanding principal, and the loan redemption is 1529871. Uh, so in year 16, there will be no more debts. So outstanding principal settled already in year 15, and then the loan redemption already uh, uh, completed in year 16. So as compared to the interest, so basically we have to pay 85,000 extra and then the total amount of pay, the total amount of repayment that we have to pay is 243249 for the loan 1157500 ringgit. So that's the system. We use the same calculation, the same uh, amounts in order to compare with how Islamic finance work. So this is under the concept of Musharakah Mutanakisa. So the amounts that we borrow is basically the same, where we actually pay 10% of the total loan. So the total loans will be, uh, the 10% will be 17,500 ringgit in year zero. That means whenever we book, we have to pay um, 10%. And then the banks will actually approve your loan for 1,157,500 ringgit. So in terms of the cash flow from the beginnings, the banks lend you 157,500 ringgit. So in other words, at this time, you have 10% equity on the property. So 90% equity will actually become uh, banks under, under uh, the bank's uh, control. So like I said uh, before, this, this will, Im will involve the so-called co-ownership. So the unit, if you can, you can recall the diagram that we have learned before. So basically the unit um, that we purchase, so we only have equity of 10%, the bank has 90%. And then the yearly redemption, it must be fixed. Yearly redemption must be fixed because this is the capital. So that means we borrow 157,500. We borrow this figure, 157,500. So we di divide by 15 straight away 
just like the same as constant amortization mortgage. So constant amortization mortgage, we said that the amortization must be constant. So it is the same for the Islamic finance. So the uh, the the, the uh, repayment is the same for the capital. Where uh, here we pay ten thousand five hundred uh, per year throughout the fifteen years period. So basically, the yearly rent, which is the amount that we are paying per month, uh, uh, should include um, together with ten thousand five hundred ringgit the capital uh, payment. And then because we calculate based on the CPM, like I said just now, for win-win situation, we calculate this amount first. And then the assumption that the profit rate is also 6%, not necessarily the case, usually lower, but uh, in order to compare between conventional uh, and um, uh, Islamic uh, for, for our discussion. So basically we use the same uh, uh, percentage. Six percent is the interest rate and six percent is also the profit rate, which in real term will not be the same. So six uh, percent and then we found that using the formula, uh, annuity formula, sinking fund that we learned uh, uh, in the last, last, uh, yesterday. So basically that formula can be used to calculate the amounts of um, monthly or yearly payments that we need for this purpose. So basically, we come up with 16216.64, and then this amount also will be fixed throughout the 15 years uh, period. So because the yearly redemption is 10500, and then we, um, we, we um, need to pay 16216.64, so basically the balance is, the, is considered as the yearly rent. That means the rent, we do not say the, 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 the installment, uh, but we say the rent that are needed to be paid in order to use the, to occupy or to use the properties. So unlike the conventional system, it is called the repayment. But here we use uh, rent. So because there is no profit here, uh, no uh, interest uh, charge here. So basically based on that, we keep continue to pay um, uh, 16 to 1 seat per year and then every year we pay so the ownership will actually be reduced by a four percent four percent every year and then towards the end in year 15 the equity of honor of ownership the ownership equity will be 100 percent in year 15 and then the customer uh, uh, in terms of figure so basically uh, the rental based on the rental here as well we are paying so basically, in terms of figure, this is the figures that we, uh, that the customer uh, will have uh, uh, to uh, the customer uh, have to to absorb in, uh, as compared to the equity. So basically, um, between the two, so basically we can see here the customer equity and the bank's equity. Uh, bank's equity will actually be reduced um, by. Um, four percent as well uh, because we were talking in terms of the figures so basically it will actually uh, reduce from time to time until it reaches uh, zero so at this time the bank's equity uh, will be uh, zero because the bank is surrendering uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 ownership of the property until year 15. so basically the banks um, uh, cash flow, which we started with uh, minus uh, 157,500, and then once the incomes or the capital, this is uh, the capital, once the capital of 10,500 for, for yearly redemption is paid, so basically you reduce from 157,500 to, um, you know, um, recover that amount from negative in year zero to positive uh, in year 15. So basically, this is the uh, bank cash flow. So that's how the the, the uh, Islamic finance work because it's based on the rental rental division. So all in all, if you use a um, six uh, percent interest rate, so basically uh, the interest that we have to pay is uh, is um, the the profit that we have to pay is 
85759. So basically, the same as the interest that we have to pay uh, for uh, the commercial loan. So basically, uh, the the concern payment mortgage and the uh, Islamic um, uh, finance will be more or less the same. But in actual facts, in actual fact, the profit rate will be uh, lower as compared to uh, the uh, commissioning system. And then for Islamic finance, it also has um, the ceiling rate. That means no matter what happened to the market, the profit rate shouldn't be more than uh, the ceiling rate for the Islamic finance. But the commissioning system, um, sometimes they have um, a ceiling rate as well, but the ceiling rate is uh, almost double the ceiling rate for um, for, for conventional system uh, for for Islamic finance, but sometimes before they, they implement the ceiling rate like 97, 98, there was no ceiling rate for the conventional. That's why the interest rate increased up to eighteen uh, percent, and everyone was uh, crying at that time. So they changed to uh, Islamic finance because Islamic finance this is the way that how how it works based on the rental division. Okay, any question on this? If no question, mm. uh, can you explain about how do we get the number, the amount of the yearly land, yearly land rent? Yearly, yearly rent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how to get that number? Okay, because we got the, we, we have to come up with this amount first. So in order to come up with this amount, we use the constant mortgage, constant payment mortgage formula. Oh. Okay. By right, we are not supposed to use the constant payment mortgage formula. But in Malaysia, we have to use because we want to uh, you know, grow together with a conventional. We don't want to kill each other, like I said. So uh, we have no choice. So basically, we use uh, the constant payment, um, payment mortgage formula. Otherwise, we cannot uh, compare with a conventional. And the conventional also cannot compare with Islamic. But in the Middle East, they do not use that formula. Because they will determine the, the the profit rate, they will determine uh, how much uh, that we are supposed to pay here. Because the competitors is between uh, an apple and apple. But now we are talking in terms of orange and apple. So the orange and apple cannot quarrel because if they quarrel, one of them will be killed. So they don't want to do like that because we have to operate. Um, uh, what we call it, uh, to operate uh, in a healthy way. So they need to help each other. They don't want to kill. Otherwise, the whole finance system will uh, collapse. Oh, okay. Mm. So based on that, when, once we determine this, this figure, 16 to 1, 6, then we know that the uh, if you look at the constant amortization mortgage, so the amounts of... Uh, of, of uh, amortization will be uh, constant throughout the period. That means the amounts uh, we are paying for the capital outstanding will be constant. So the balance is yearly rent. So this is the answer to your question just now. Okay, any other question? So can uh, can the buyer just change the from conventional to Islamic whatever whenever they want? Uh, can that's what happened in 97, 98 when the so they don't have to do the refinance or propose to get a new oh, obviously obviously not to change like you know you change uh, um, you change your your note or whatever or you change your answer during exam you know for your friend it's changed like that you cannot do that way there must be a process you have to uh, surrender uh, the uh, existing uh, loan first and then obviously it will involve certain costs not that much you you must enter into another agreement but for a non-muslim it's okay you don't have to akad you know just for you to get the uh, islamic uh, finance that's fine but for muslim usually we uh, we need to akad like i mentioned before um for non-muslim you just uh, approach and then they will um, terminate or refinance the property and change it to uh, 
Islamic finance. Okay. Okay, thank you, Doctor. So then the account will change to uh, an Islamic. Uh, they have the, the most banks they have like the normal account and the Islamic account. So do you do that first and then apply for the loan? Sorry, say again, not that clear. No, I mean uh, most banks they they have like uh, Islamic bank account and then they have the normal bank account. So uh, to to get your loan uh, with the Islamic way, do you need to change your account to take to have the Islamic account? No, if you have commercial account, just post it with commercial account. That's a different thing. Uh, if you have okay. account, then use it some account. Doesn't mean that you have to change your account uh, to, to to create another account on Islamic. But the only things that uh, you need to, to to follow is the Islamic uh, finance here, not the account. You can uh, use you can use commercial account as usual, but to pay for the Islamic uh, finance. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. So okay. This is the uh, Musyrakah Mutanakisa, uh, based on the uh, co-ownership uh, scheme, co-ownership, um, what we call it, um, based on co-ownership system. So the same thing for uh, Islamic um, uh, Ba'i Bitaman Ajil. So for Ba'i Bitaman Ajil, it's just straightforward. It's just uh, the same like we are, are paying for the uh, higher purchase uh, loan. For example, we are taking a loan to purchase a car, so we are paying a monthly um, uh, installment. So basically, you just uh, calculate based on that. So in installment is we use the formula I multiplied by A, the power, uh, and then multiply by PV divided by A minus one. So we have this sixteen two one six. So when we uh, look at uh, look at it again, so the annual installment uh, divided by 12 months. So basically this is the annual installment and the total payment is basically the down payment plus monthly installment multiplied by 15 years. So basically it will become 260749. So for a Tawaru, it's the same as this, based on the co-ownership um, uh, where we come up with this as well. It's just a matter of um, uh, approach. How do we get um, to make it um, halal for, for, for the Muslim? That's why we come up with uh, the, the system that, uh, you know, we have to pay to, we have, we have to purchase commodity um, from vendor A, and then we also have to sell to vendor B. But it's look a bit complicated, but as a purchaser or a customer, we don't have to know all those things. Because those things are actually working behind the screen without your knowledge. That means the bank do not have to tell you, okay, the commodity that we are going to purchase is a BMW or a Mercedes. And then we are going to sell to uh, a supplier or to, to vendor B. You don't have to know all those things. The banks will do that. What you have to do is to account on it. But um, I'm telling you the system behind it, uh, how it works. But as a purchaser, we don't have to to do that. But the only thing we have to know is how much that we are going to pay based on the profit rate uh, uh, given by the funders institution. So if we agree, and then we sign the agreement after we are cut. We are cut first. I uh, agree uh, to uh, repay uh, 2,000 ringgit per month for the next 25 years, blah, 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 blah. So normally the bank will provide uh, 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 write up um, a statement, something like that. So we just read. Or if you don't want to read, we know already. So basically we just uh, tell the bank that we agree. If we agree, um, you know, so it becomes... Uh, uh, what we call it, uh, uh, sah, sah mean it will become the the the, the uh, binding uh, agreement uh, already valid. That's what that's what we could say. 
just say I agree. That's it. Even to read the statement also can. Okay, that is uh, the Islamic finance. So now uh, we try to see the repayment patterns between conventional and Islamic. So basically the yearly profit, like we have seen just now, is 5716 per year. And the yearly redemption is 10,500 per year. And the total payment is 17,500 for 10% in year zero. And then the balance is 16,216. And then the outstanding principal will actually uh, become negative or, you know, uh, 157,500. And then uh, down there, the last payment will be yearly redemption should equal to the uh, outstanding principal. So basically, there is a balance in terms of uh, repayment. So that is uh, the repayment patterns. So here we have tutorial. So we close this topic now, and then we go to uh, the tutorial. So uh, which tutorial that we are supposed to discuss today? Lecture, which lecture? Lecture seven or lecture? Lecture six and seven. Lecture six and seven. So now I'll share uh, the screen of lecture six. So, is this the one that we are supposed to discuss? Yeah? Uh, yes. yes, yes, this one. The, the, this, this, this is a correct one. Okay, so I will stop sharing my screen now because you are the one who's going to share the screen. Uh, I just click stop presenting and then the screen is yours now. The screen is yours now, so you can actually, um, you can actually uh, go ahead with it. So can someone answer or you want me to call your name? If I call your name, uh, you will become uh, manja manja a bit, you know? Manja manja, when I call your name, uh, slowly and then you know, you want to start to answer slowly. Uh, Dr. Then, mm. Yeah, I will go first for yeah. this uh, try. Uh, uh, let, let me share my screen first. Uh, who is it? I cannot see. Like, uh, like what? Like what? Like what? Okay, go ahead. You guys can see my screen, right? Uh, okay. So the question is discuss the role of special SPV, special purpose vehicles, and its impact on Malaysia housing finance system. So what I outline for my framework is the what is special purpose vehicle and its role as well as its impact or positive and both negative. This is the framework. Uh. So for this, is it okay, doctor? You you start from the the, the three things is uh, the 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 framework. Yeah, this three. The the one I I, I okay. like one. Uh, this one, this three. one thing. Uh, can, can you? Tell me what are you supposed to do? Uh, what are you supposed to do? This is the framework. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what you are supposed to do? Um, you know, in order to answer this kind of question, not this question, this kind of question, which uh, the word I uh, discuss from the beginning. What are you supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Discuss mm. from. You mean when like we use, yeah, totally. When we use the word, okay. Use, sorry, sorry, again. Can you say again? When we use the word discuss, what is in your mind that you should come up? Forget about the question we are dealing with. We are dealing with it now. 
because discuss always come out in any other question as well can can come out you know so when we have the word discuss what is in your mind that you have to include um what is what is that thing the, the, the topic we are going to discuss and no, that the, one that one is of course uh -huh. otherwise you won't answer the question yeah. but in your mind what you are supposed to include in order to come up with um, a complete answer the benefit and the disadvantages yes you must come up with discussion to show the advantages as well as the disadvantages but based on whatever question that uh, you are going you, you are going to do okay you must understand that if you talk in one way like you are taking express train from kl to uh, jb for example one way everything one way so that means you are not discussing you are describing Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then you have the disadvantages and disadvantages, and then you come up with the conclusion. That way, how we answer uh, discussion. When when okay, since this question say that discuss the role of the vehicle and the latter part is say that is impact on Malaysian housing finance system. So this part also already will be discussed about the pro and cons of the. Special purpose vehicle already, right? Yes. Okay. It can be splitted. This kind of question, it can be splitted. Discuss the role of special purpose vehicle, full stop. Mm. And then number two, discuss the impacts of special. the special purpose vehicle on the Malaysian housing finance system. It can be two questions. And the mark can be 10% and 10%. Okay. Okay, now we go back to the question. So what is a special purpose vehicle? And its role and then its impact. So where are you going to put the disadvantages and advantages? Okay. The special... Where, where are you going to put? Sorry, doctor, again? Based on the 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 uh, framework you are giving here, where are you going to put the disadvantages and advantages? Uh, the impact. You going to discuss that. So you are going to discuss that. Ah uh, yeah yeah. I'll, oh straight to discuss the impact. No, because like I said just now. If we split the question into two, number one, discuss the roles of special purpose mm. vehicle, full stop. Question number two, discuss the impacts of the special purpose vehicle on the Malaysian housing market, uh, the Malaysian housing finance system. That is another question. So if you imagine we try to split uh, those sections, because like this, obviously, obviously, You, you must understand, even one question, because it has N, and the mark should be treated into 10% and 10%. If you discuss more on the role of special post vehicle, but a little bit on the impacts, you will score on this part only, on, on, the, on the roles, 10%, with the maximum of 10%. So you must know how to justify. Okay. Okay. So uh, based on the framework you are giving here, where are you going to put the advantages and disadvantages? Is it under impacts or under special under the rules? And under the impact. Under the impacts. Yeah, because okay. impacts like net can be positive and negative, which means also talking about the pro and cons itself. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So.